Hey Fish Palm, welcome to my shop. This is my entry for the Sergeant Tank 5 gallon canister build off. I've designed and built this canister with primarily processes and tools that most avid do-it-yourselfers would have already on hand and or are well within the capabilities of your moderately skilled do-it-yourselfer. Let's go ahead and break down some of the features of this build. The canister is made using a standard five gallon bucket. Most of the internal baffles and baskets are also made using cut up pieces of buckets, which were cut up into sheets and flattened using a heat gun. The canister hooks up using standard three quarter inch tubing, has on and off valves on both the inlet and outlet, as well as quick disconnects. The lid is made out of three quarter inch acrylic with a quarter inch O-ring. It latches on the left and the right side with draw latches to create the seal, which are connected to a metal band that is inset in the rim of the bucket. You'll also notice on the top rear center a Watts breather valve. The breather valve allows the canister to bleed any excess air and remain full of water, while not permitting any water to escape. This also assists in startup anytime the canister is accessed, assisting the filter to prime. The water flows in on this side into a small chamber here where it is directed up over this baffle. It then pools over top of our mechanical filter pad in this top chamber. Then it passes through the pad and down through the two media baskets which can be filled with any kind of media, whatever is desired. Down at the bottom it passes through a hole in the baffle into the heating chamber where it rises up through the chamber across a heater, then flows over the baffle and down into the return pump chamber. The returning water comes up on this side and returns to the tank. The clear acrylic lid allows for constant visual verification of the status of the mechanical media. When it comes time to change the media, the valves can be closed, The latches flipped over and hooked on the lower hooks. This allows for the use of these draw latches to pop the lid off. Like so. And then the lid can be removed and set aside. The mechanical media pad can be removed and discarded. A new one added. And the lid can be replaced. Then the valves turn back on and the pump restarted. Now we're going to take it apart and go over each part and how it was made. The lid mechanical media tray, the first media basket, the second media basket, and the rest of that is built in. We'll start with the lid. The lid started with a single square 12 inch by 12 inch piece of acrylic. This was a 3 quarter inch thick scrap. I cut a wood template and shaped it into a circle. Then, using the use the template as a router guide to carve out the details, the acrylic to a perfect circle. <clears throat> then, using a flange cutter bit, a slot cutter bit, I worked my way around the circle, cutting a slot to fit the three the quarter inch over. This size O-ring can be purchased readily off of McMaster Car or any other source for O-rings. I did in fact make this one 
out of O-ring stock I had on hand. <clears throat> Two small blocks of acrylic were cut to make the front and back stops. If I was going to do this over again, I would have put four latches on all, all four corners. It does not all, sometimes it takes a little bit of encouragement to seal the one, either the front or the back, but it does seal. <clears throat> Another two blocks of scrap were cut and cemented on to be used as blocks, mounting blocks for the latches. These small draw latches have a loop and a handle. They're good for drawing it tight, and you notice we also use them for popping the loop back off. They're screwed on into two threaded holes. The Watts bleeder valve, which bleeds air out of the canister, is simply a hole was drilled and tapped for eighth inch pipe thread. And this is just screwed right into that and screwed tight and drawn tight. I also went ahead and using a large drill bit, ran it partly in to cook, create a nice lead in. This will help funnel the air to the valve and make sure that we don't get any pockets somewhere else. The mechanical media tray is simply a cut and shaped piece of lighting diffuser. The media baskets were actually the first things built on the project. The top and bottom of a bucket were cut off. Oh, and then the bucket was slit down the side to give me a single sheet of plastic. That sheet of plastic was flattened using a heat gun. The flat sheet was then cut to fit inside of another bucket to create the appropriate size media chamber and chamber for the pump, heater, and plumb. That sheet was then glued from top to bottom using hot glue. I found that with the HDPE that they use to build make these buckets, hot glue actually works better than just about any other adhesive I've been able to try, including various cements and even silicone. Once that, that cooled and was fused, the second bucket's top and bottom were cut off, leaving one continuous chamber, divided chamber, or one, the divided bucket. Then the bucket was cut here and here to isolate this chamber, and the chamber was cut long ways all the way around into sections. By making this out of a second bucket, out of another bucket, we ensure that each, that the fit is correct and that as they're dropped into the actual canister filter, they drop only to the correct height and stop. The resulting media basket sections were then inserted into the bucket that would eventually become the finished canister. Another bucket was cut up, turned into a sheet, and another baffle cut. This baffle was then inserted up against the baskets and hot glued into the main canister bucket. With that glued in, the media baskets could be removed, and we were resulted in our final bucket with our two chambers. The primary baffle divides the bucket into two sections, the media section and the heating and return section. A second plastic baffle was cut and installed so as to divide the heating section and the return pump section. All of these baffles were sealed in or glued in with hot glue. The aquatic life return pump was put down in the bottom and connected to the exit plumbing using a piece 
of 3 quarter inch soft tubing. This isolates the pump from the, the rest of the plumbing and reduces vibrations. Both the return line and the inlet line pass through the wall of the bucket using uniseals, which require a hole to be drilled using a hole saw in the side of the bucket. The uniseal is installed and the PVC is pressed through it, expanding the uniseal to seal both inside and out. The inlet water enters the inlet chamber, which is made using a couple pieces of scrap plastic trimmed to create a small box that guides the water up and over this lip. That box is glued together using a hot glue. When the lid is installed, it sits flush on this surface. In order to achieve this, these were all left proud and then sanded to assure a snug fit when the lid is fully seated. It was desirable to not have to cut the ends off of the cords for both the heater and the pump. It was also desirable to have both the heater and the pump internal to the canister. I used a combination of a few off-the-shelf parts and one homemade one. The off-the-shelf parts are a large uniseal, inch and a quarter pipe, and inch and a quarter PVC union. In order to seal the cords, I had to make a part. I made this plug out of hot glue. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video and check out my filter. Hope you guys all enjoyed it and maybe got some good ideas for ways, things you could do for your own filters. Vote for me and Sergeant Tanks, five gallon canister build off. See you fish fam.